When we talk about non-free fall situations, we're really talking about situations in which air resistance is not negligible. We must consider air resistance. Now, what is air resistance? Again, this room is full of air molecules. And, you know, I don't really notice anything if I just kind of wave my hand like this you know, very slowly. But what if you start waving your hand in front of yourself pretty quickly? You should notice that your nerve endings are, are telling you something, right? You are hitting the air the invisible air molecules that are in this room, thankfully, in order for me to be able to breathe, are filling this room. And when I wave my hand, I hit them. And I can't hit them without them hitting me. And that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling the air molecules. Essentially, I'm feeling the mass or the inertia of those air molecules on my nerve endings. And notice that the faster I wave my hand, the more force I appear to feel. And that's partly because I'm hitting more air molecules when I move it faster. So that's one thing you'll notice is that air resistance is not just one fixed value. It depends on, first of all, how fast you're going. When you're going slow, you're not encountering that many, that much air resistance because you're not hitting many air, air molecules. If you don't hit many air molecules, not many air molecules are hitting you. But the faster you go, the more air molecules you hit, and therefore the more air molecules hit you. And therefore there's more air resistance. Remember, the force of the air molecules hitting you is opposite the direction of motion. But that's not the only factor that affects air resistance. The size of an object affects air resistance. So you know, my, my pen here, if I move at the same speed as my hand, doesn't hit that many air molecules because there's not that much surface area to hit those air molecules and therefore fewer air molecules hit it compared to my hand when it's completely nice and flat like this. It's taking up a large space, large area, and therefore more area with which to hit air molecules and therefore a larger area that air molecules can hit my hand. Take for example uh, an apple, right? Dropping an apple. So the air so as, as the apple falls, when it first is dropped from my hand, it's barely moving, and therefore it's not hitting many air molecules. But as it goes faster and faster, it's hitting more and more air molecules, and therefore the air resistance increases as the thing falls until eventually it gets to the point where it's hitting so many air molecules every second, the force of those air molecules hitting it becomes so great that it actually equals the weight of the apple, and that's when we have hit terminal velocity. If you think about the sum of those forces, the weight of the apple is the force acting downward. The air resistance is the force acting upward. When eventually the air resistance gets to be so great that it equals the weight downward, your net force is zero, and therefore you're no longer accelerating, you have hit terminal velocity. How do you like them apples?